So as I was saying, the parameters just aren't fitting the model. We have to look at our RMSE computation again. Well, I've computed it three times using backwards propagation, forwards propagation, even sideways propagation. I'm not sure what to do next. Have you tried adjusting the parameter step size? Or maybe we can use some support vector machines. Uh, I'm not sure what the best way forward... I'm sorry, were we bothering you? Sometimes you need to connect with people without offending those around you. With current technology, you risk alienating yourself and appearing to be distracted. We look to improve on the current state of the art by developing new approaches which support subtle interactions. We started by surveying over 200 people about their current discrete use of technology. 86% of the respondents reported using technology subtly during meetings, and 94% had reported getting caught using technology. Additionally, over 90% of the participants reported that they would use technology that would help them interact with their devices more subtly. We also found that the most common tasks people performed were checking the time, texting, and taking photos. Therefore, we sought to improve interactions for these tasks. Watch the following clips and see if you can spot the interactions. Can you spot us during the Enlightenment? Uh, I don't believe so. Are you a good idea? I think so. Do you especially take hold around meal times? No. Are you colorful? Can be. Are you edible? No. Is there typically a cupboard at work where I can eat for free? No. Are you made of natural materials? I don't believe so. Do I use you in combination with another item? Uh, yes. Do you fit in a bread bin? Do I buy you once a month or thereabouts? No. Are there songs about you? Not that I know of. Do you have a handle? I can. Did you spot them? To develop our interfaces, we build on established principles from the domain of magic. Specifically, we derive the following guidelines for the design of subtle user interfaces. User customization, modularity, simulation and dissimulation, separating cause and effect, and user training. Please see our paper for more details. Using these guidelines, we have provided a number of supporting, input, and output devices that can be used for subtle interaction. This small modular LCD can display photos and texts. Its small size makes it easy to conceal within a number of everyday objects. The Phony Phone is an application that responds to touch and gesture but appears to be a phone that is turned off. This allows users to control applications while observers believe they are just fidgeting with their phone. Here it is controlling the modular display. The Numerical Sonification application allows users to encode numbers within audio alerts that sound like notifications. With this approach, users can keep up to date with the current sports score or the current time. The Proximity Minder is a small wearable device that provides vibrotactile feedback if someone is approaching the user from behind. This gives the user a chance to conceal their interactions. This grid of magnetic sensors allows the user to control a device using gestural input. The sensors can be hidden inside of a book or on a user's clothing, and the magnet can be embedded in an eraser or underneath a bandage. The Audio Buffer is an application that constantly records ambient audio in a short buffer. When the user initiates playback, the buffered audio is quickly played back, typically through a bone conduction earpiece or a small headset, allowing the user to rejoin the conversation. Allowing the user to rejoin the conversation. The subtle spy glasses contain a small camera embedded in the frame which is triggered by a button that can be concealed on the user. This device allows users to discreetly record video and photos. To manage this system of devices, we have developed an easy-to-use graphical interface. Users can configure a number of presets, which may represent different contexts of use, such as a casual meeting or a formal dinner. From there, users can configure which devices will trigger events, which data to use, and what output devices these actions will be mapped to. More advanced functionality can be accessed by configuring the resultant mapping. We also present an evaluation paradigm that can be used to measure the subtlety of interactions. We recorded a series of two-minute meetings where each had at most one attendee interacting with the device. During some of the rounds, the attendee would use a traditional device such as a mobile phone, and in others they used our new subtle approaches. 
Afterwards, 60 participants viewed the videos and tried to determine who was interacting. Some of the participants were naive to our new subtle approaches, while others had knowledge of the various modules. A third group was informed as to how each module was customized within the study. We found that our new approaches were more subtle than existing methods. We also found that the customization of the devices played a very large role. Participants were unable to identify interactions even when they were aware of the various modules that were being used. We hope that our design guidelines, taxonomy, and novel devices will inspire the development of future subtle interfaces.